alcoholism in, the, in his congregation. But uh, come with money for the collection. Um, and that's for those, if you're not familiar, that's for, if you have a birthday or anniversary in the month of June, uh, we have uh, the a church, little church box up here, and there's a donation you put in for that. Um, we are also going to be returning uh, to our sermon series in God Made Man uh, next week. We're t- taking a special uh, sermon this week uh, regarding Memorial Day, but next week we'll be returning to that, and we'll be talking about Thomas next week. Also next Sunday, the 6th, in the afternoon, uh, and through uh, Monday, the 7th, uh, Dave Houston, who is the charge representative to annual conference and myself will be participating in this year's West Ohio annual conference. It will be virtual, uh, so we'll be doing a lot of sitting and watching, uh, but we will certainly report back to you the following week. I heard rumors that there was going to be a few more contentious things this year than last. Last year was very abbreviated. I think uh, they want to do more, but Dave and I will uh, be participating in that on behalf of the two churches. Um, Also, I do want to let you know that at the end of the service today, after the benediction, I want you to just have a seat for just a couple more minutes. We have a very special postlude that we're going to share with you, and I don't want you to miss it. So as soon as uh, the service is over, I do give the benediction, have a seat, and then we'll have the postlude, and then you'll be uh, allowed to leave. Well, you're allowed, but you should, you should stay. Um, Pat says here, Pat Ballman is going to have a birthday on Tuesday, June 1st. Happy birthday to you. Means we expect you to put in the collection next week, right? (laughs) Yes, yes. Do we have any other announcements uh, that uh, need to be made uh, for the congregation before we begin service? Very well, Nancy, will you prepare hearts and minds for worship?
That deserved a hand. Very good, Nancy. Thank you so much. On this day of memory, we gather to sing and to pray. And we remember the past and we look to the future. On this day, we come before God and seeking his peace. And on this day of hope in the face of terror and all kinds of unrest, we come before God praying with all our hearts, God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. In this time of story, song, and prayer, may we be recommitted to being people of peace, true peace. May we catch a vision of how we can, how the world can live together. And so we echo the old prayers, make us a channel of your peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope in years to come, we offer our gratitude for those who have gone before, and we offer our hope for those yet to come. And as we honor the past, help us dream of a future of love and peace. Comfort us in our sorrow. Strengthen us for the journey. Guide us on the path of justice. Help us live as your people that others may see and remember your wisdom and truth living in us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you will join me in our opening hymns, uh, first we'll be uh, singing America on page 697, and then uh, the second hymn will be Eternal Father Strong to Save, which is in the bulletin. It's the first and, first, uh, first and fourth verses of that hymn. So if you're able, please rise.
You may be seated. We've come to that time of our service where we're lifting up our joys and concerns uh, to the Lord. And I have a number of them I want to share with you this morning. And I left it over here. Hold on. Some of you may have heard, uh, Marilyn Weimer just lives a couple doors down here. On Friday, had a spill outside of her house. She, she had fallen, um, cracked her head pretty good, and uh, broke four ribs. Uh, she ended up in the hospital at, Blanchard, or at Bluffton overnight. Uh, but she got home yesterday, a little sore, a little worse for the wear, uh, but no concussion or anything, so uh, we're grateful for that. And some of you know Rosie Zippel, uh, and uh, I, I know uh, Crawford's, uh, their sisters were married to her brother and all kinds of relations. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Rosie ended up in the hospital down at Lyman Memorial. Uh, early yesterday morning. Uh, she's going to be in for a day or so, like we think, uh, but she's not going to need surgery. She has uh, uh, diverticulitis, uh, an attack of that, uh, so we'll pray for her because that's very painful. Uh, also, her brother and their brother-in-law, Jim Motter, uh, we've been praying for him for quite a while, and he's now being uh, moved to, or has been moved to Bluffton Mennonite Home for further, um, uh, further therapy. I mentioned earlier that um, I was going to a funeral this Wednesday. Uh, back in the 90s, we had a pastor that I loved and respected greatly. His name was Reverend Bill Hines, and his wife Carolyn was with him, and uh, Carolyn was just a wonderful Christian lady. They had six kids, all of them were in the ministry in some fashion. Uh, Bill passed away a few years ago, but uh, Carolyn found out a few months ago that she had cancer, and she passed away on Thursday. So. Uh, the funeral will be Wednesday in Marysville, so I'll be heading to that. Um, Pastor Mark, uh, first of all, had asked that we also remember Tasha Stevenson in prayers this morning. Uh, Tasha's, uh, we, put, we prayed with, for her before. She's 33 years old. Um, she has stage four cancer. And um, she was told uh, that if treatments didn't show some market progress in the next week, they were probably going to send her home on hospice at 33 years old. So she and her family need a lot of prayer. And I, I tried to reach out to John. Kobe, share it. Your cousin, uh, how, how's Kobe doing? Uh, she got out of the ICU on Wednesday. And then uh, they found out that she's got gallstones. Oh, okay. So now they're going to fight that. But otherwise... Okay, so we, okay, but it, gallstones is a lot better than a lot of things it could be, so. He said that possibly the gallstones was causing all her other trouble and they didn't realize it. Okay, so continue prayer for Kobe, uh, and she's, what, 11 did we say? 10. 10, 10 yes. Uh, you, were correct, you corrected me last week on that, and I should have known that. Grandpa Sherry corrected me the other night. <laughs> All right. uh, are there other prayer requests that we need to bring before the Lord today? Yes, um, Patty. Um, first off, a praise. I have some of my family here with me, so that's great. Yeah, we got the Welsh edition back there in the, <laughs> in the room. I love that. Um, second of all, I've got two um, prayer concerns. First, please keep Mike in prayer um, for a speedy recovery and some pain to go away. He decided on top of everything else we've gone through this year to come down with shingles. So he's dealing with that right now. And then also, if you can keep my daughter Jessica and her kids in prayer, um, we appreciate it. Okay, for those who uh, did not hear on the uh, announcements or on the online, um, Patty Welch is uh, asking for prayers for Mike, her husband, who has shingles, and then also just. Uh, prayers for uh, her daughter Jessica and grandkids uh, in their situation. Uh, were there others? Uh, yes, Jean? Um, we have a praise today, as Patty said. Um, uh, Abby and Matt are here with their kids, and Maxton is a new addition to our church, and so we want to welcome Maxton. Very we good. We have a little gift for him. Yes, it's a blessing. 
and we present them with a, a little care package. Uh, Regina. Well, I have a praise and then I have a prayer request. We had a great niece born on Tuesday um, to my sister, my youngest sister. This is her first grandchild, my niece's first child. Um, and our youngest daughter-in-law, Holly, um, her father had an incident Thursday at work, went home early, and his wife went home, and he kept passing out all day. He passed out in the car on the way to the ER. They had to put a pacemaker in him, and um, he has to go back in Wednesday for another surgery because one of the wires isn't quite positioned quite right. Okay. Thank you. And what's his first name? His first name is Mike. Okay. Well, we got a lot of mics that need a lot of prayer today. <laughs> I'll include myself in that group. Char? Uh, just remember Pastor Ben, even though we thought everything was going great with his back surgery, he all of a sudden had spinal fluid leaking. And so he had a second, a smaller surgery, but they think everything's all right now. Is he still in the hospital? I don't know. Um, last I heard yesterday, I think he was. Uh, but I, I imagine he's going to be getting out soon. But uh, Pastor Ben Lowell, that's uh, Pastor at uh, New Hope uh, over in Rawson. Many of you know him. Uh, he's getting ready to retire here in a few weeks. Uh, but this back surgery has kicked him pretty hard, and he's going to need to wear a brace for, I think he said, six months. So this is not going to something that's going to get over overnight. But thank you. Uh, Dwayne, did you have something? Yeah. Uh I uh, want uh, prayers for the Nonamaker family. Uh, our brother-in-law, Jim Nonamaker, we found out or heard last night that he'd passed away. So uh, the Nonamaker family and, well, it's uh, Pat's sister's husband. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we all need some prayers and uh, guidance. And did TC have one? Thank you. I will get that. Yeah, just uh, I asked everybody to keep our troops in in, uh, in prayer. Um, they're giving a lot. I mean, we're here looking forward to barbecues and that today, and that's not what it's all about. It's to remember the ones that gave everything for us, and uh, just ask uh, prayer for their families that, and the ones that are still over there fighting. Thank you, TC. And we have one over here, Bob. Uh, my uh, stepdaughter, Gina, continues to uh, show recovery from her surgery. Uh, she's currently in a rehab facility. Uh, since the uh, treatment that she had been receiving apparently wasn't working, uh, they'll be reevaluating this week on uh, what to do next. So. Okay. And we've been praying for Gina and we'll continue to do so. And uh, so, Megan. The Neil Williams family um, in Forest in Kenton area, Neil was 16 and passed away of, due to a car accident uh, last Sunday. And his uh, grandpa's significant other works with me and it's it's been a really rough time for, for all of them. And also- His name was Deal? Neil. Neil. Neil Williams? Yep. At 16, that's, that is devastating. Yep. So, and Callie's um, best friend broke her wrist this week at school, so. Okay, and uh, Gary, we had one up here. Brian has, has one. Uh, it's a uh, praise and prayer. Um, my um, former foster son, him and his wife have been trying to get pregnant uh, for quite a while, a lot of in vitro fetalizations, and they finally got one to take. Um, so we'll praise that, and then just continue pregnancies will go will go well with healthy and strong absolutely it is a miracle that what they can do now and uh, I, I know I have a personal friend that they struggled for a long long time and even lost one but they still have two fully grown healthy perfectly great babies and that's that's wonderful I'm, I'm so happy to hear that for you uh, anybody else oh Emmett e Emmett it's so good to see you. He's, he's got wheels now, and we've missed, yeah, yeah. We missed wanna, you for a number of months because of I your wanna, accident, I but we're thank, so glad you're here. I want to thank that for them wheels. It's kind of sickening sitting around the house all the time. Yeah. And anyhow, I want to thank the uh, church uh, 
family for uh, all the cards and letters and concerns that I got when I was laying around feeling sorry for myself all winter. <laughs> so uh, thank you, church. Yeah. Well, it's great to see you. It is. Anything else? Tammy. No, I'm just... Some of you have known Harold has had severe headaches, and um, they're back again with vengeance. And so pray that Friday we get some answers. Okay. So he's going in for test Friday? Okay. Harold, our prayers are with you, buddy. Thank you, Tammy. Any others? All right. Will you please join me in the prayer hymn today, which can be found on page 431. Let there be peace on earth. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts. As times change, as time continues to fly by and things are never the same, the one thing that we can rely on that's constant is you. You never change and your love for us never changes. You care deeply for each and every one, whether they respond to your love or not. And of all the prayer requests we have this morning, and you're, you're grateful to receive them, you want us to lift our prayers to you. You already knew them all. You knew each and every situation. You know what's needed. So the list in our bulletin that we have people on that we've been praying for for some time, we just know that you'll continue to work in their lives. We have so many people that are suffering this morning. The families of Carolyn Hines and Jim Nonamaker and Neil Williams, they're all suffering a great loss. Just ask that you give these families your peace and comfort at this difficult time. 
Let them know that you have their loved ones in your ever-loving care and that you will not leave them in this dark hour. We also want to thank you for the health progress, the, the recovery that you are working in the lives of Marilyn and Jim and Rosie and Kobe and Mike and Pastor Ben. We just ask that your continued healing touch be on each one of them and be with Mike Welsh as well with the shingles and Lord, I ask you to put your hands upon our brother Harold Parkins and just relieve these headaches. Have the doctors know what to do to touch him and to give him the relief that he so desperately needs. We give you praise for the return of Emmett to our midst and we give you praise for the birth of children with Maxton joining Madison and the Broadman family and with Brian's foster son getting the news that they are expecting the miracle of birth is such a beautiful thing. Lord, some of the people that we're praying for have diagnoses that are really very devastating. And one of them is Tasha Stevenson and her stage four cancer. Be with her. Surround her with your love. And continue to be with Gina as she deals with her health situation and they reevaluate the treatment regimen that she's going to need. Lord, we are so blessed in this country. We are free to come here and worship you without worry of reprisal. And part of that is because we have men and women who dedicate their lives to the service of this country and give of them themselves. And they pay a price. And we just ask you to be with them and comfort them. As we came in today, we put in the basket our tithes and offerings and we just ask you to bless it, multiply it, and help us to use it in the way that you would have us in furtherance of your kingdom in this community and beyond. And we thank you for the blessing of your son, Jesus Christ. If we ever have a time where we're not thanking you for him and the sacrifice that he made for each one of us, I don't know what we're doing. So we just lift up our praise and our thanksgiving for the sacrifice of Jesus. His death and resurrection made it possible that we could spend an eternity with you in heaven. And we look forward to the day, someday, when we can be reunited with loved ones and we can be reunited with you, Lord, and with your son, Jesus, and we can sit at your feet and worship face to face. And it is in the name of that blessed son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. What holiday are we going to celebrate tomorrow? Summer break. Summer. Oh, <laughs> you are right. Oh, my goodness. We, that is very important. <laughs> okay. Memorial Day. Okay. Now, I brought some pictures of two veterans that are very special to me. And one will be up on, on the slideshow, and that's my dad. And his name is Don Hahn. He served during World War II. And the other one's not going to be up there, but he's my great-grandfather, and his name was Henry Hershey, and he served during the Civil War. So... After the Civil War, a few years after the Civil War, there was a general that had served, and he wanted to uh, honor and remember all the veterans. His name was John Logan. So he started a movement where you'd go to a cemetery in May, because the Civil War ended in May, and put flowers and decorate graves to remember all these soldiers who had died, because there were so many of them. And eventually, everybody around the country went to the cemeteries on Decoration Day, they called it. It wasn't Memorial Day. It was Decoration Day. And they decorated the graves. So down through the years, Decoration Day kind of changed a little bit. There were more wars, unfortunately. But there was the Spanish-American War. There was World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, and on through the present day, there was all the wars. And another change was, instead of calling it Decoration Day, they called it Memorial Day, because they wanted to remember the, the soldiers that had died. And so eventually people started calling it Memorial Day. And then in 1971, Congress passed a law and said Memorial Day would be the last Monday of, of May. And that way, all, everybody could take off and have a nice weekend. They could go to parades. They could have family get-togethers. So it was a change, and the American public liked that change. Um, now, being a soldier, and we've got one veteran sitting over here, sometimes it's scary. And sometimes it's not so fun. There's other times when they get to dress up and they wear all their ribbons and, and everything that they have earned. But then there's the scary times. And Haley has a Bible verse that's going to talk about the soldiers and what they should do. Joshua 1 through 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay, and she has another Bible verse, and that's for all of us and the friends and families of these veterans. John fifteen thirteen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Okay, so when you leave here today, remember that we're celebrating not only with, with parades and barbecues and camping, but we're also honoring the soldiers who died for us so we can have the freedom to go to church, worship as we please, we can have the parades. We can have the barbecues. And it's because these, these soldiers died for us. Okay, let's have a prayer. Dear Father, we remember and honor those who have served to preserve and protect our freedom. 
We also celebrate the resurrection because all of us who have placed our faith and trust in you, even though we die, will live again. Amen. Okay, now before you go, I've got something for everybody. And I want you to take this and place it in your room, or if you go to a cemetery, place it on a veteran's grave. But remember, this represents the men and women who have died for our freedom. Okay. Okay, you can go back to your mommies and daddies when you get your flag. The scripture lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through chapter 8, verse 4. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me waging war against the many, against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Thank you, Gary. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. May look a little bit different talking from over here this morning, but um, the presentation we're going to have later, we want to make sure that w the people who are online can see it well. So John's not up in his normal perch up in the balcony. He's down here, and um, if he turned that way, we'd be looking right into the window. So uh, I will uh, speak from here. But uh, thank you, Gary. Thank you, uh, Sue and Haley and Nancy and, and Emily for your participation in the service this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, you've heard it said that there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? No such thing. There's got to be a price that's paid somewhere. And if it sounds, you've also heard it said, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. There's always a catch somewhere that needs to be done. Oh, the, the advertisements are out there. Buy this thing and we'll throw in this for free. Well, you know that they've included the price or made sure that they were compensated for that in the original thing they're trying to get you to buy. 
even though it sounds good to get something for free. You enter a drawing. You win a free trip to Disney World. Well, that's good, and it may be free for you, but somebody had to pay for that. You see, there's always a price that has to be paid. So oftentimes when you hear free, it's not necessarily free. It said the government can't give you anything it hasn't already taken from somebody else. Well, that's, uh, it goes along with that too. There's always a price to be paid that needs to be paid. Let me put it uh, in this way. Um, Jack Hayford and William Watkins uh, wrote a study on the book of Romans called Kingdom Living, Growing Steadfast in Faith. And he discussed this issue in this way. People move away from their homelands looking for it, sometimes leaving friends and family behind. Others brave new trails, facing unknown dangers in the pursuit of it. Many fight against addictive demons, drugs, alcohol, food, workaholism, smoking, perfectionism, pornography, just for a taste of it. Far too many die on native or foreign soil in defense of it. More and more people seek to find it in financial independence. And untold numbers have turned to every kind of religion imaginable, striving to experience it. Statues are erected in honor of it. Music and paintings are commissioned to celebrate it. Armies are trained to fight for it. Schools, or at least most of, most of them, uh, teach students to respect it. Riots break out and demonstrators march to voice frustration over not having it. Support groups gather to discover and nurture it. Religious leaders and their followers pray for it. Countries rise and fall. Political ideologies come and go. Religious leaders wax and wane. Families pull together and split apart. Businesses flourish and go bankrupt, and all because of it. So what could be so highly treasured, so honored? And that's freedom. You see, we all want it, even if we sometimes fear it. We were created to enjoy it, experience it, and experience nothing less. But in the far reaches of our history, we lost it. Now, I want to stop here because there's a caveat here, because but during the course of this message, we're going to talk about two kinds of freedom. One is spiritual freedom and one an earthly freedom, and they're two very different things. And right here, we're going to be talking first about the spiritual freedom that we have. But we lost that. See, the freedom we knew under God became a dream engulfed by a nightmare. That God-given ability to satisfy the desires of our heart in ways that were always pleasing to our Creator became distorted and strained and twisted. We still wanted our freedom, though, but we kept going after it in all the wrong ways. So we became slaves. Slaves to cravings that drew us further away from God, from one who lovingly created us to serve Him. Traces of our original dream still linger deep within our souls. We still hunger for it, so we still try to make it, make it come true. But we'll never find it apart from God. You see, we're fighting a losing conflict. We hear about conflicts and wars in, on this earth, but from a spiritual sense, we are fighting a losing conflict against sin. And we are taken captive. Sin finally triumphs, and the person is sold as a slave to sin. His state is miserable. Paul wrote about it in what Gary read today. Everything, I, I want to do well, and it, the evil is right before me. And this question gets put forth. Who can deliver me? Who can deliver us? Well, the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He alone will set us free from the law of sin and death. You see, Paul writes many times in his writings that Christ paid a ransom for us. See, there's always a price to pay. We sin. Romans tells us the wages of sin is death. 
So if we're going to be set free from that, who's going to pay the price? The price should be ours. But Christ paid the ransom for our sin. He made it possible for us to have an eternity and have that hope. He says several times in Scripture, you were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. You've been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. You see, our Savior suffered and bled and died for us, giving himself entirely so that we may freely receive eternal life and hope. His all deserves our all. He is worthy. Romans 5.12 said, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. He's worthy. And here's the secret, folks. Our earthly freedom, in this country we've enjoyed a lot of it, but our earthly freedom is not always a subject of our personal control. You go to other places in the world, people yearning to be free just as much as we are, but powers much bigger than them have them oppressed. But when we're talking about eternal freedom, spiritual freedom, that we all have control over. It's our choice. Nobody can take that choice away from us. We can make that choice. You see, Paul calls on us to submit ourselves to God as resurrected from sin's penalty and power to become his servants of righteous living. We don't sin anymore. Sin is no longer our master. God is our new master. And we are his servants because of our identification and union with his son through his crucifixion, death, and burial, and resurrection. And as his servants, we are called to counter sin's advances with good offense of God, godly living. So what are we supposed to do with this gift when we make this choice? Well, Christ told us what to do with it. Just before he ascended into heaven, he told his disciples and his followers gathered there in Luke 24, 47, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. To all nations it will be preached, beginning in Jerusalem. In Mark 16, 15, it says, Go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And in Matthew 28, 19, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So why did he tell them that? Why did he choose followers in the first place? Well, he wasn't always going to be with them to tell the story. He gave them the power of the Holy Spirit to give them the courage and strength to do it. But it's up to them and every generation after, it's up to us to share the story of what Jesus Christ did for us and how he set us free. And on the altar behind me, do this do in remembrance of me. Remember. Remember that sacrifice. Now, you talk about the earthly freedom. That's a little bit different. Many people have stories, too, that need to be told about freedom and the price that was paid. I share with you the story of a man by the name of Levi Morgan. He was a resident of Hancock County, actually. He lived during the Civil War, fought with Company B in the 21st Ohio Volunteer Infantry. He survived the war, but during the war he had been taken prisoner in one of the Confederate prison camps, Andersonville and Cahaba were the two that were the most notorious as far as conditions. More people died there of illness than of injury. But on April 27th, 1965, or 1865, even though he lived till 1918, he lived about 50 years plus after the Civil War. There's something that happened on April 27th, 1865, that changed his life and stayed with him forever. 
You see, on that date, he was on a steamboat by the name of Sultana. Now, Sultana was on the Mississippi River coming north. <clears throat> it had stopped in Vicksburg to do some repairs on a boiler that was acting up. And they put some patchwork repair on. But that's all they did because the captain wanted to get on the road or on the river. He wanted to get going because he had been contracted to carry these prisoners of war north. April 27th, we're talking 10 days after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And he was contracted. So as a good entrepreneur, he's going to carry as many as he can because they were paying $5 for every enlisted man and $10 for every officer. So they take off on a ship meant for 376 people. It was carrying 2,300 and with the spring thaw, they were also battling a forceful current as they were trying to struggle north. And it became the worst maritime disaster in the history of the U.S. Nobody's ever heard of it, unless you're studying it closely. Because on that night, that patched boiler exploded, causing two others to explode. And over 1,750 men lost their lives in that disaster. That's more than the people who died on the Titanic. Everybody knows about the Titanic. We don't hear about the Sultana. Here these men face the worst of the Civil War. They're on their way home. And they die because a boiler explodes. It's tragic. He lived many years, but that night stayed with him throughout. And you see the stone there. There are five of them in a row. The, middle, the bigger one says Morgan on it, and there's an inscription. I'll tell you about that later. The one right next to it is the military stone representing him. So why am I telling you about this? Well, one is because Unless somebody tells you the story of Levi Morgan, you're not going to know about it. The other thing is, those stones are a climber cemetery across from Pleasant View Church, right around the corner. And because he and his wife and his children died after 1872 when that building was built, that church stood in silent witness as those funerals took place across the street. See, who's going to tell the story? Who's going to tell the story? The soldiers of the Civil War got older, the ones that survived. They saw the ones of the Revolutionary War, they had gone. And then the Mexican War, and they had gone. And it was now their turn, and now we go forward. In this World War II era, veterans are quickly leaving us. And then it'll be Korea, and then it'll be Vietnam. Well, John Hendrick, who, was, who served in the Civil War with the Indiana Volunteer Infantry, was reflecting on this late in life. And if you remember, the Union wore the Blue Jackets. Remember? And if you know anything about NHL hockey, Columbus has a team, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they're named that because Columbus made thousands and thousands of these Blue Jackets for Union soldiers to wear. That's why if you go down there to a game, you see the cannons go off and everything else. It's pretty loud in there, actually. But John Hendrick wrote a poem that I want to share with you. He said, when the boys in blue are gone, when the comrades have departed, when the veterans are no more, when the bugle call is sounded on that everlasting shore, when life's weary march is ended, when campfires slumber long, who will tell the world the story when the boys in blue are gone? Who will tell about their marching from Atlanta to the sea? Who will halt and wait and listen when they hear the reveille? Who will join to swell the chorus of some old grand army song? Who will tell the world the story when the boys in blue are gone? 
sons and daughters of this nation, we must tell of triumphs won. When on earth our work is ended and the veteran claims its own. You must all cherish old glory and its teachings pass along. You must tell the world the story when the boys in blue are gone. To that flag our country's emblem, we must pledge allegiance to. To that flag our nation's emblem, may our hearts be ever true. That the nation be protected against injustice and all wrong, you must tell the world the story when the boys in blue are gone. You must keep your country's honor. For each stripe withhold all stain. You must take the veterans' places and repeat the role of fame. You must keep your country's honor and your flag above all wrong. Then we'll trust you with the story. When the boys in blue are gone. So I ask you, who tells the story of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and what he did for us? Should it not be us? And who tells the story of loved ones, of Sue's father and grandfather, great-grandfather, and all of the other loved ones you have? Who tells that story? It's got to be us. Those stones have been there for over 100 years. Most have passed by, never knowing. And how many stones are just in that one cemetery? And then you go to places like Arlington, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands. And each one is a story. But who's going to tell it? See, that Morgan stone, the one in the middle, I told you there's an inscription under it. Under the name it says, to live in the hearts we leave behind is not to die. So we owe it to tell the story. And so in doing that, in preparation for Memorial Day, we have been putting out a request to our church family here. An invitation had been extended to share pictures of those of your loved ones who have passed away who served in the service. They didn't necessarily have to be killed in service, although I believe one of them was at least. But the response was positive and extremely positive and overwhelming. And suddenly we had people talking to relatives saying, oh, do you still have that picture of so-and-so? I want to share it. Or what, do you remember what division he served in or where he was at or what she did? And families were talking and they were telling the story and they were sparking those conversations. You see, they all gave some. Some left a part of themselves, even though that they came back and survived many, many years. All gave some, some gave all. But on this Memorial Day, we must remember that freedom is not free. A price always has to be paid. Our earthly freedom was purchased by the efforts of our loved ones who are, we are remembering here this morning. And our eternal freedom was purchased by the sacrifice, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we are to remember always and forever. And it's up to us to tell the story.
If you're able, would you please rise and join us in the closing hymn, which can be found in the bulletin insert, God Bless America.